One is is brought to you by Guam Power Authority, Guam Visitors Bureau, Bank of Guam, the Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Pacific Daily News, and Mariana's Variety. One is in half a day, Guam and the Marianas, Guam Si Pali Suba. And I'm Alana Chargalov. Thanks for watching. Today is Tuesday, June 7. Your morning headlines on Buenos are presented to you by the Pacific Daily News. Attorney General Levin Camacho has officially took the steps to his 2022 re-election run yesterday. The AG filed his candidacy papers at the Guam Election Commission office with his family beside him. Camacho then issued a statement saying results matter. In other news, Senator Jim Moylan is petitioning Speaker Therese Terlahi to hold an emergency session for the passing of some form of gas relief. As gas prices continue to rise, Moylan wants lawmakers to convene and address four pieces of legislation introduced in the last six months that aim to reduce the cause of prices at the pump. Moylan's Bill 290 would save consumers about 32 cents a gallon. And the first day to sign up for the Governor's Summer Youth Employment Program garnered more than 400 students from across the island. The program plans to accept 650 students from 14 to 17 to work in various positions in GovGuam agencies. The final day to apply is today. The government of Guam will need to accept applications from recreational cannabis businesses by August 27th. The Cannabis Control Board formatted industry rules and regulations, which took effect on May 29th. However, it's unclear if GovGuam could even deposit the money it receives from cannabis businesses, including application fees. Another COVID-related death was reported yesterday. The patient was a 49-year-old fully vaccinated man with one booster shot. He also was reported to have underlying health conditions. In other news, a woman was charged with stabbing a man known to her. Sonny Clarissa Vargas was accused of stabbing the man in Assen after the man spat on her face. The man later said that he didn't know if she stabbed him or if he walked into the knife. For more of these stories, log on to GuamPDN.com or pick up the latest issue of the Pacific Daily News. Following a presentation to the Mayor's Council of Guam on a waste to energy incineration plan for the island in May, a motion failed within the Council for a resolution in support of the plan during their general meeting on June 1st. David Sablon, a former GPA chairman, now representative of Guam Resource Recovery Partners, said he's been working on this for over 20 years. He said the incinerator would provide the second cleanest fuel source to natural gas and significantly decrease the amount of waste piled into Guam's only landfill in Inalahan, which he said is contaminating southern waters and can only contain 11 cells, two of which are already full since its start in 2011. He also claimed it would decrease the monthly cost of residential waste removal services from $30 to about $10 and bring the current tipping fee of $154 per ton down to $80 due to the incinerator's production of electricity. Additionally, the incinerator would produce 12 megawatts of electricity sustained by residents' current generation of 300 tons of trash per day. During the June meeting, Chalampago Ordot Mayor Jesse Gogui was the only mayor to make a statement in opposition of waste to energy and made a motion to not adopt the resolution. He questioned where evidence of buy-in was from stakeholders like the Guam Power Authority, Guam Solid Waste Authority, the local Environmental Protection Agency, and the legislature. And if Guam as a small island can absorb the effects of something going wrong with the incinerator as opposed to larger locations using them. 
He also wanted to clarify the resolution statement that failure to act on the decision would mean continued cost and harm to the people of Guam and environment, and said Senator Sabina Perez's Bill 284-36, which promotes recycling and zero waste, made no reference to waste to energy. Although he too questioned a resistance to the plan for over 20 years, Inalahan Mayor Anthony Chargoloff, heading the village containing Guam's only active landfill, expressed his support. For Buenos, I'm Alana Chargoloff. Of the 15 mayors present for the vote, 10 abstained and 5 voted in opposition. Mayor's Council President Mayor Jesse Alley called for a separate meeting just to address waste to energy. He said he will work with Mayor's Council Executive Director Angel Sablon on how to provide the mayor's adequate information to make a decision. And planning to invite back David Sablon and even Senator Sabina Perez. When we come back, we'll have your CNMI morning headlines presented by the Marianas Variety. Buenas and half a day. Hey, Mars, good evening, man. Good morning. <laughs> we like to say we're in the business of opening doors. Since first opening our doors in 1972, our love for our community has driven our legacy of service. We've seen paths to bigger and brighter futures. So what are we saving for? School. We've seen the heart of our people. You ready for this? Yeah. Okay. We've seen our communities come together to help one another. We've seen passion become successful business plans. We've seen generations of families grow with us. Wow, that was easy. Wow. <laughs> and when we think of all the doors we help to open, we can't help but be reminded of the reason we're still here today. Our people. Save power, save cash with these tips. Set the temperature on split AC units and thermostats to a minimum of 75 degrees and turn off your AC when you leave the house. Take short five minute showers instead of tub baths that can use up to 25 gallons of water. Take advantage of trade winds and sunshine and hang your clothes outside. Remember to turn off the lights when you leave a room at home or the office. Visit GuamPowerAuthority.com to learn more about energy conservation and GPA's Energy Sense Rebate Program. Welcome back to Buenos in the Morning. Your CNMI headlines are presented by the Marianas Variety. 
Lawmakers have proposed fuel vouchers, but the administration believes that a federally funded second stimulus program will be more helpful to the public. Secretary of Finance David Italic said a fuel voucher program is only going to help motorists, but the stimulus program is for every taxpayer and their dependents. Governor Ralph D.L.G. Torres said he has spoken with both Italic and the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation Executive Director Gary Camacho regarding the oil price increases and how they affect the utility costs in the CNMI. The governor said they are looking into how they can further assist the public. And if there's going to be a fuel-related program, it will be going to the CUC so that everyone in the CNMI can benefit and receive that kind of assistance. Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios remains in the intensive care unit of the Queen's Healthcare Center in Honolulu, Hawaii, where he continues to undergo tests in the aftermath of his medical event at Guma Justicia on Tuesday, May 31st. The Lieutenant Governor expressed his appreciation for the fast action taken by the emergency medical technicians from the Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services who arrived in the courtroom moments after they received the call. Palacios also thanked Governor Ralph Torres for personally coordinating with the Department of Defense for a safe transport to Hawaii. The Lieutenant Governor's office will continue to provide updates as they become available. Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation CEO Esther Munya has noted a slight increase in the number of positive COVID-19 community cases in the CNMI. On Monday evening, the CHCC reported that as of June 5th, there were no individuals hospitalized as a result of COVID-19. However, 37 additional individuals had been confirmed positive for COVID-19, bringing the CNMI total to 11,403 cases since March 28th of 2020. Munya said COVID-19 vaccinations are still available at the CHCC Immunization Clinic, which is open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. Children who are at least five years old are now eligible for booster shots five months after completing their primary COVID-19 vaccine series. The CHCC said as of June 6, a total of 23,360 COVID-19 additional and booster vaccine shots had been administered. Of the eligible population, 62.6 had received an additional dose. To register for COVID-19 vaccination, visit vaccinatecnmi.com or call 670-682-7468 or 236-8745. For these stories and more, pick up a copy of the Marianas Variety. And coming up on Buenos Talk, I sit down with our friends from the Guam Visitors Bureau as they share their plans on opening Guam's first cultural smart, smart park. This is Buenos in the Morning. Save power, I almost save said cash. smart Stay park. clean and comfortable with these no, tips that wasn't to your save fault. on water heating. Set your water heater to 120 no, degrees. A, it, this I, will help reduce your I didn't heat correct loss the, and slow mineral buildup and corrosion smart, in your and heater I, and pipes. Take short five-minute showers instead of tub baths. Filling the bathtub uses over 25 gallons of hot water. Install low flow restrictors in older faucets and shower heads. They reduce flow to one or three gallons per minute. Visit GuamPowerAuthority.com to learn more about energy conservation and GPA's Energy Sense rebate program. Tourism is Guam's number one industry. It creates jobs and brings in spending. When a visitor comes to Guam, they spend their money on hotels, on transportation, on shopping, on dining out. They're happy they came to Guam. You know who else is happy? The hotel they stayed in and the bellman at the hotel. The tour bus drivers and tour guides. The stores they shopped at and the banks they used the restaurant and the waitress, the supplier who delivered the ingredients, and the farmer who supplied the produce. From real estate to retail, tourism has a positive impact on every industry. When tourists pay taxes, it means locals pay less. Let's make sure our local economy grows so it becomes strong and healthy. Make Guam a better place to live, work, and visit. Support tourism.
Buenas and half a day on this episode of Buenas Talk. I've got some exciting news to share from Guam Visitors Visitor Bureau's Nico Fujikawa, the Director of Tourism Research and Strategic Planning, and Mr. Joshua Taikenko, the Public Information Officer. Buenas in my hand is something so very exciting. So, Nico, what? Yes. I guess I'll let you. Sure. introduce it to our audience. Well, first of all, thank you for having us on the show, Polly. We appreciate it. Um, uh, as soon as the news broke out in our, our membership, I asked Josh, hey, let's start meeting with everybody. Let's start um, you know, getting the word out and letting the public really know what the park is all about, okay. what it is GVB has been working on for the past, uh, gosh, over, I want to say a couple, several months. Uh, we started designing this idea. But really what we're offering, and it's kind of in line with um, Governor Liu and, uh, and Josh Tenorio's vision for reimagining tourism, is Guam's first cultural smart park. And there's a lot to unpack in that, and I'm glad you have us on the show and we have some time to talk to you about it, because yeah. I do want to sit with you and, and, and let everyone know just how much detail, how much planning has gone into this and, and why uh, it's significant for the island and what it means going forward. For the I, visitor industry. I did a little bit of research on smart parks, right? Um, there's a lot of research on smart parking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not a lot of research on smart parks. So let's just go there real quick. What is a smart park? Exactly. So so everybody's familiar with the, the term smart, the tech term smart, right? Smartphones, smart homes, uh, you know, smart TVs. Uh, so what we did was we really wanted to figure out what is the best thing that we can dev uh, design um, for the future but also still be rooted in our past. And that's what the Tanoi Famaguen, the official title of it, the land of the children, uh, was basically born. A smart park is, uh, if you can imagine, imagine an, an entire themed park in Chamorro culture. Uh, we joke around about things like a Sanahi seesaw, a plumeria go round, uh, the duk duk slides. Um, in the park that you'll see, we actually have what we call Tenda Town, which is a huge flying proa. And these are things that Guam has always known but never have invested into the infrastructure to be immersed in. Mm -hmm. so, so imagine all of that immersion, but then there's a digital component on top of it. Real quick, where is this? We, this is gonna be in GVB's park. backyard. So uh, EPAL Park, the uh, Governor uh, Joseph Flores Park, mm -hmm. uh, will actually uh, be uh, kind of enhanced, if okay. you will, to become Guam's first cultural smart park. And uh, the vision that we had here was, Imagine giving your children a smartphone and going out to the park and they could scan anything in the park from the benches to, to the buildings to the, the huts that are around, the gumas, uh, and they can learn about the culture. It's all about accessibility. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we thought of this was we want to perpetuate culture, but culture is very, um, what do you call it, inaccessible right now. If, if you wanted to get your children uh, or anybody wanted to get them into a guma, into a dance guma, or to become an apprentice, you really have to know somebody to know somebody, you know? But we wanted to change that. We wanted people to be immersed in the culture and just easily access it. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what this is, and it's just the start. Um, you know, you mentioned my title earlier about uh, tourism research and strategic planning. The key there is the strategic planning for the future, mm -hmm. is how do we, we evolve tourism? How do we move it out of Tumon, like, like, like we were talking earlier? And, and what's the best route to do that? So what we did was we designed the, the heart of it, which is the Tanoi Famagoen, in Tumon because every visitor passes there. Right. A lot of locals go out to eat dinner there. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just a place to, of happening, right, of activity. So we start there, but then we use the technology to push them out into our villages. And okay. Yeah. Because you're going to need the buy-in mm -hmm. from the entire community for something as large as this, right? Yes. Because there are some people that go to Epal Beach Park for barbecues, birthdays, you know, uh, the big pavilion that's mm -hmm. there, they reserve that spot. Yep. And they claim ownership over it as well. You also have small businesses or just businesses in general that want to um, uh, basically accommodate their business plan with tourists. Mm -hmm. And they're not in Tumon. Mm -hmm. So you gotta you gotta work with a number of stakeholders, right? I mean, absolutely. This is a this is an island project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a huge undertaking, uh, and you know we do have the support of the governor, um, initially giving us twenty million dollars uh, from federal funding, and uh, this is American Rescue Plan funding. The the total project cost after we kind of designed it out was closer to fifty million. Um, but here's the way we see that, right? I know everyone has different opinions on how to use federal funding, mm -hmm. but it's money we've never had before. 
And so at the Bureau, we said, let's use it to create an asset we've never had before, to generate new money we've never made before, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's not paying for operations, it's creating a whole new uh, ecosystem and a habitat that the region hasn't seen before. So, I mean, that, it, it's, uh, you know, I wanna go into all the details with you. We're excited, obviously, about it. Right. Um, but the Smart Park is, again, the launch pad. It's the stepping stone of how we're gonna evolve the island going forward. Right, uh, just reading the vision, uh, you're going to, to build around the Hafiday spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the, the vision um, was, was pretty simple, right? It's a cultural home for all to learn and play by living in the spirit of Hafiday. And um, we made it rhyme so it's easier to remember, but, <laughs> but when, you really, when you really break it down, um, you know, Dr. Perez, our vice president, said that it really is a profound statement right. because living in the spirit of Hafiday also means immersion in our infrastructure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, we, we're, we're locals, so we know what the spirit of Hafa Day is. We know how to be hospitable. We know how to welcome people into our homes, you know, feed those that are in need, help our family out, things like that. But, but to actually have an environment that encourages it. Imagine being able to, to scan um, a trash can. It teaches you all the chamor basula for trash. You know what I mean? Things like that. We don't have that for our children. So that's why land of the children is to perpetuate that more organically. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, what is this going to do for the market? Asia market, Korea, Japan, Taiwan. Uh, this is uh, what we think and what we feel is kind of the, the biggest significant attraction being developed. Uh, the last time something of this magnitude was built was Pleasure Island back in the 90s. And yeah, it had game works, you know, it was, it was, it was glitzy and glamorous, right? It was fun. But since that time, there hasn't been real significant investment into an sure. attraction, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think also there, there can be buy-ins with uh, other parks around the island as well because mm -hmm. I can just imagine going to, to this park, this smart park, right? Uh, Tano y Famagun. Yes. Immersing in it, enjoying it, and then also having another day to go out and explore. Well, if I want to possibly enjoy something similar, mm -hmm. there are places. The Valley of the Lati. Right. Exactly. That's very similar. Mm -hmm. And I can go and enjoy that too, to, to, to immerse myself in, in more of the culture. What, what we were trying to do with the park too is we wanted people to not only immerse themselves, but kind of be organically inspired mm -hmm. to go out further. So you're, you're exactly right. Uh, for example, one of, the, one of the, the assignments I gave my team at GVB was, let's look through all of these uh, Chamorro legends and let's start strategically mapping out villages that have been called out over the years and what's the significance. So that strategic planning stems from this, but imagine this, right? The, the legend of the two chiefs, the battle of the two chiefs, Chief Garao and Chief um, uh, Malaguanya, right? Nobody really knows about Malaguanya, but there was the chief of Tumon. So now we have a direct link between the chief of Tumon and the chief of Inalahan. Mm -hmm. Now we can start developing attractions that, to your point, we can link the start of here. Malaguanya heard there was a chief stronger than him. Mm. So he decided to sail down to Inalahan. Now a visitor or even a local who doesn't know the legend can travel now to Inalahan and make that connection. Mm -hmm. So these are kind of the things that we're exploring now, immersing in that Hafidei spirit. Yeah, it's also your mind is becoming more curious. Right. Uh, wanting to learn more, wanting to go venture further out of Tumon. Right, and that's a really a big goal of ours is we don't want visitors to just stay in Tumon because the real local experience is out in the other villages. You go down to Maleso, you go down to Inalahan, you go down to Haget. Like all those places down there have that southern charm and have a different identity than that of Tumon. And of course, like right now, we're working on some projects that are like a prelude to that. Like we have electrical panel boxes that are showcasing different images and you can scan those QR codes and then it directs you to Inalahan. And it's, I think those are just some of the things, it's a preview of what's to come with uh, Tano Ifamagun. I'm looking at the Guput Garden, and then I see like a pavilion in the background. Is that the main pavilion? That is the main pavilion, yes. So it's staying. Right, the main pavilion footprint, and the whole footprint of the park isn't, isn't too um, uh, altered in this project. And a lot of it you'll notice is open space because of COVID, we wanted things to still be uh, you know, health conscious and mm -hmm. having people to still get out there. Um, the park is still a public park. It still belongs to the people of Guam. And all okay. we're doing is we're enhancing the activities and the offerings that you can find in that park. For example, we have a, one that we call Metgut Mezzanine. <laughs> and it's an adult workout area. 
Right? Okay. Um, because because GVB is playing a big role in this, you know, we're we're looking to have security, our our visitor safety officers, um, on site all the time. So it's going to be a safe environment. And I know a lot of people frequent Tumon for exercise or or health. So mm -hmm. why not give them an area in the park that you know? Imagine this. Imagine a coconut kettlebell. Right? Imagine <laughs> a Laddie Stone pull-up bar. That's what we're looking into. Why not be able to have fun immersion in our culture? Sure. You know? Sure. How far have we gone into the, um, to making sure that this park uh, still looks amazing 20 years from now? I, I'm so glad you asked that because when we designed this, right, we, we knew that if we're getting new money sure. to, to develop this, we needed the park to generate its own revenue. Okay. And so Tenda Town um, is, is a big key to that. It's our commercial building within the park. Okay. Um, it's, it's in the shape of the Flying Proa. I see it. And uh, everyone would see it coming to Guam, right? We don't have an icon like this that you have to take a picture with or you have to visit. But Tenda Town's offering is, is a couple of things. One, it's kind of like our little Eiffel Tower, right? <laughs> you got to go there. There's a huge, if you're flying in and you see okay. this huge Proa. But the reason why we chose the Flying Proa was because it was the first thing that was documented from an outsider, right? Magellan talked about how quickly mm. the Flying Proa has circled his ships. Mm -hmm. So now we're kind of calling back to, to our culture that this is, this is our icon. This was the first thing. Why not be the first thing to draw somebody in? Definitely. But, yeah. Definitely. Uh, so you're going to have vendors there. Uh, yes. And mm -hmm. then the money that's generated there will continue to more capital improvements. Park. Well, actually, to maintain the park. We maintain, want it to be okay. self-sustaining at first, sure. and then we see any additional new money, uh, obviously, we can go back into to new projects. Part of the, the thing that Josh was alluding to earlier, and it's something that the strategic planning group at, at GVB is looking into, is this is the start of what I like to call a one, one village, one attraction. We're moving away from the one village, one product, right? And we're moving towards one village, one attraction. And GVB is going to be intimately involved with the village mayors and designing it so there's that cohesive look between what we're trying to do in Brand Guam. This is just, you know, I'm, I'm just as, when you first showed this to me, I was just like, wow, this is, this is some innovative thinking here. Uh, so I, I really wanted to get into like the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. that are helping, you know, bring this to reality? So, I mean, the way the park is overall designed, you can imagine it's almost like a themed uh, Chamorro Disneyland, if you will. Uh, everyone, every section has a different offering, a different mm -hmm. activity, but also built for a different um, demographic, a different character. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Funagoin Field, right? Fumagoin is the Chamorro word for children. And we called it Funagoin Field, where this is where you can take your kids and kind of... Um, you know, explore the culture, but also play in it, right? We're, we're even looking into things like the level of detail that team and I have, have sat with is, imagine turning, throwing trash into an actual activity. It, you know, we're, we're imagining um, a cocoa bird holding like a gothic basket. And if you throw a trash, a sensor will go off and say, Sizu is maasi, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now our kids are, are living the culture, living the Hafa day spirit, right. but it's also a fun offering for them. You know, I'm sure my daughter would be like, give me more trash just to hear it yeah. and have the Cocoa Bird dance. But that's the kind of level that Guam has been lacking and yeah. we absolutely can do and absolutely right. need. There's got to be also some research as well where you, you go visit some smart parks as, uh, that are in our region. Have you guys gone that far? Well, we, we actually just this year became members of the IAAPA, the International Attractions and Amusement Park Association. Okay. And, and so we're learning from some of their benchmarks, learning what's the impact to the economy, how many jobs can be created, what type of people it okay. attracts. So we're starting there. Um, but, but you know what? You're right. Because there's not a lot of um, uh, research on a smart park, yeah. we could actually be um, setting a new frontier. There you go. And, and, and that's great for us, right? Why not? Yeah. Well... And we're also drawing inspiration too from different countries like New Zealand. Yeah. New Zealand has done an amazing job promoting its culture mm -hmm. and making it immersive with visitors and making them feel like they're part of that community. So a lot of, oh yeah, we're, we're looking to other countries too and taking that inspiration from them and taking it and making it our own. Well, let's, let's just continue that conversation. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to take this to our YouTube channel for like a Buenos Plus online exclusive and dive even deeper into this initiative. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds great.
Once again, this is Buenos Talk. I want to thank Nico and Josh of GVB for joining us. And then don't forget, the conversation continues on Buenos Plus on our PBS Buenos YouTube channel. Coming up, your COVID recovery report and your seven-day weather forecast. This is Buenos in the Morning. Save power. Save cash. Energy Star certified bulbs use 75% less energy than traditional bulbs. Provide the same light and last 10 to 25 times longer. They also come in different styles too. Keep bulbs and fixtures clean. Dust can cut the amount of brightness coming from bulbs. Turn off the lights when you leave the room at home or in the office. Visit GuamPowerAuthority.com to learn more about energy conservation and GPA's Energy Sense Rebate Program. If you are a senior citizen or an individual with a disability who needs assistance in getting the COVID-19 vaccine, call 311 and press 2. A representative will be happy to assist you in scheduling a vaccination appointment, arranging transportation if needed, or arranging homebound vaccination service. Just call 311 and press 2. This public service announcement is made possible through the Guam Tri Agency on Developmental Disabilities, UOG Center for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities Education, Research and Service, Guam Legal Services Corporation, Disability Law Center, and Guam Developmental Disabilities Council through the Administration for Community Living. Once again, I'm Alana Chargaloff, and here is your COVID recovery report. A program administered by the government of Guam is providing incentives to individuals 12 years of age and older who maintain their COVID-19 vaccinations and who are completing their last dose in a primary series or receiving a first or second booster dose. Eligible residents may choose between IP&E gift certificates for $25 of gas at Shell gas stations or $25 at Shell Foodies Guam stores while supplies last. Alcohol and tobacco items are excluded. Gift certificates will only be offered at vaccination clinics at the Northern and Southern Region Community Health Centers, the Aganya Shopping Center, and Senior Citizen Outreach Clinics. It's important to note that incentives are not retroactive. Walk-ins are welcome at any of the following locations, but scheduling an appointment is highly encouraged. For the Aganya Shopping Center second floor, you can register at tinyurl.com slash vaxguam. And for both the Public Health Northern Region Community Health Center in Dededo and Southern Region Community Health Center in Inalahan, register at tinyurl.com slash COVID stops with me. That's all for now. This has been your COVID recovery report on Buenos in the Morning. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Have a bright and beautiful Tuesday. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. Buenas is brought to you by Guam Power Authority, Guam Visitors Bureau, Bank of Guam, the Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Pacific Daily News, and Marianas Variety.